Hi guys, we are in our December business boost, and today I'm really excited about the topic we're going to cover. We're in it. Um, it's going to be something that I've been very deep in for the last week, and um, want to share you, with you some some things about sales pages and how you can set up whole campaigns. Um, so that's what we're going to be talking about today. And um, let me just one of the things that is really helpful for me, and I know, Ashari, you've been doing a lot of campaigns just recently, and um, sometimes what I find is actually mapping out how campaigns are going to flow can be really helpful. So I want to sh show you what kind of the big picture view of what I want to you know, walk you through looks like, but know that this is all about using a sales page. And so can you guys see this, this page that I have up? Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. So a sales page is a page, I'll just start with that, is a page that is optimized to get people to click through and say yes to whatever you're offering. And a sales page very often is not, does not have any other, um, does not have any other links or possibilities. The only thing they can do is actually click the button that says, I want to sign up now. So this is a way that um, kind of best, best practices around uh, marketing um, tools, like sell, sell strategies around um, marketing campaigns, online marketing campaigns, is based around a sales page. And you can create sales pages. I mean, you can actually create them in your website. Um, the challenge with creating them in a website, assuming that you can get all of your navigation out of that page, I know my WordPress site actually has um, an option for a page where I can create a sales page. But the, the, the challenge with doing it within your own website is that it's not, it doesn't have all the scientific research behind what really works. And when you, and there's the one that Sarah and I use is called Lead Pages. Um, there's other ones out there um, that you can look at. So if you Google, you know, sales pages, you're going to find all different types of them. Um, and they have been tested and tried, and they keep all these records and track things. And so they know what pages really convert. And so that's the, the benefit of using a sales page. And I've been creating a um, whole campaign right now around my webinars that I'm going to be running at the end of the month. And we thought it would be useful just to sh walk you through some of the, the campaigns, the way we set up campaigns within our um, marketing database and how it links to the sales pages and what kind of components we build into that campaign. So this diagram assumes that we start with a promotional campaign of social media, certainly Facebook posts and Twitter and other, and an email campaign. And I am doing this example around webinars. And um, a lot of the research says keep your, your promotional period short and quick. So a week to 10 days is maximum, which you really want to, you know, if you, if you, the day that you launch this, this is about a, a one to or about a one week to ten day um, time frame, and um, so I'll let you kind of just throw in here as far as the number over a course of a week. So let's just assume this is a week. How many Facebook posts? How many Twitter posts? What what would you recommend on creating that, and how far apart would you build those? Um, I, I think that there are several different ways to approach it. But at the end of the day, um, there is a like what not to do that I want to start with. And so what okay. you don't want to do is say, I'm going to post three posts today about my event. Right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that you know people have an appetite and you don't want to overfeed them. Right? But on the other hand, you don't want to starve them and you know as well. And so right. there will be a couple of different types of posts that I will create. And so if I've got that seven day lead time, I'm probably going to do you know at least uh, I would say five posts that are going to be talking about that event. But they're not going to be five posts that all have an image with a link that say, "Hey, you should come." 
Right? The first one might be that kind of an image with the link that says come, but then the second one might be a video where I'm inviting people to come, but only after I've given them some really intense value. Right? I've given them a story, I'm giving them a tip, I'm doing something, or I've written a long form, like a longer form blog type post on Facebook, right? So it's this, hey, I'm giving you value, and then at the end, here's the cool offer for you. Um, there are other things that you can do, like just post, you know, an inspirational kind of a t uh, uh, image and text, but then use the PS line. And PS, by the way, if this spoke to you or resonated with you, know that I've got a really cool opportunity that I don't want you to miss out on. Click here to learn more. And so that PS option is a really fun way. So I guess what I'm trying to say is you don't want, you know, five hard hitting, come into my, you know, space. It's, you know, here's the initial offer, then here's a story, then here's something else with a, oh yeah, don't forget, and then maybe there's going to be another hard, you know, press. So how about that? Perfect, perfect, perfect. And you can you can post more to like a Twitter than you can to a Facebook. Absolutely, I would say whatever you do to Facebook times it by at least three for Twitter, because Twitter's got an appetite that can take all of that. Um, and if you do Instagram, then I would use kind of the same strategy that I would use on Facebook. Okay, okay, great, great, great. And then at the si simultaneously, you'd be launching to your email list, um, and over the course of one week. Um, I would do three emails. I would do one probably on that first day, um, a couple days later do your second email, and then the third email like the day before it's your last chance kind of thing um, to get signed up to it. And all of these are feeding in to a link that is a sales page. And um, let me pop up what sales pages look like. So, this one. I'm going to start with just showing you this particular one, and then I'm going to go in and sh into this program and show you a little bit more. So, this is one for the 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 webinar that I'm leading on December 29th. This is all templated. It's really easy to go in and say, okay, um, here's my title, here's my bullet points. And this, the way this is laid out is exactly what has worked for other people. So I'm not having to guess what's the best layout, what's the best anything. It's all there. Um, and then I can click through to it. And I was testing this this morning. In fact, um, who could I do a test with on this? Um, Ashar, can I use you? Sure. Okay. Tell me your email. Ashara at harmoniesheartcoaching.com. Harmoniesheartcoaching.com. And your phone number? 327. 9073. So when this clicks through, it's going to take you to a page with a video. It's going to take you um, where you can easily and quickly share that page. Um, it's telling, giving them an action item. Go take your bold move quiz right now. Um, you can add it to your Outlook. It gives them, you know, so this is all a template that I'm just filling in. Um, but it makes it all really simple and easy, and it's easy for people to share this. Um, so what, let me go into the actual looking at this piece. I just have to say while Cammie's pulling that up, like when I first, when she was like, I've got this really cool lead pages, we've got to check it out. I just, I was overwhelmed, like, oh my God, like this is a new system, it's going to be really hard to use. And I just have to say how impressed I was with, like, you know, I didn't know what I was doing and I clicked through it just intuitively and was able to build something really, really simply. So as you guys are thinking about, you know, using new technology or, or these types of tools to streamline your processes, know that the learning curve isn't awful and there are lots of really cool um, tools that you know, help you to know what to click. And yeah, there's a little bit of stuff that you're going to have to figure out and it might be a little frustrating, but at the end of the day, it's so, so worth it. So just have to throw that out. 
Yeah, and I think the other piece is their support is really awesome. I belong belong to their Facebook group, and I can just go out and post a question, and I always have an answer within an hour if I don't know how to do something. So if I click on this box where I am telling them to, um, let me go back from where that is. This box here is the, the box that they would click to sign up. So if I click on that, I can go in. And I, it, I can tell it, I've already set it up to go to my, our GoTo webinar piece and which webinar this is for. And so that it automatically signs them up when they fill in the, so Ashara just got signed up for this webinar. She's already gotten an email from GoTo webinar with all of the, the, um, the links or all, you know, the link that she would click in for that. Um, more importantly, and depending on what your your mailing service is, um, I think yours is, is yours constant contact, Ashara. Yes, it is. So yours is, is going to be one of those forms that will connect directly. Um, so you just have to say it's a constant contact form. You create the form in constant contact, and then it you you, you it, it connects to it there, and so. This for us is Hatchbuck, and so this is actually code that we pull out of our um, our database system. But it's really easy to create this. It's not like we have to code it. It's actually, you know, you, you dr drag and drop um, what it will look like in our in our our database. In fact, I'll pull it up for you. So, you know, it's asking for first name, last name, phone number, and email. And so when they fill out that form, it's automatically going into our database. It's tagging them with the, the join the mailing list. It's, tag, it's creating an event in their record that's your best year ever. And it's the event on December 29th. And it is a campaign, and it starts a campaign. So all of that just happened. So if I go back to this, this visual here, when I signed up, you know, I, I, I took Ashara through here, she signed up that one time, it signed her up for the webinar, it added her, she's already in the database, but it, it checks her, and if she's in the database, it, it, she's now enrolled, and um, if, if she was a new person, they would totally add her record, but she's not a new person, so it, it's going into her record. And it's enrolling her into a campaign, and it's also putting an event in her record that will create um, a second campaign that counts down. So this one will automatically send her an email, number one, um, right now. And then number two, tomorrow, it will send her a second email with some homework that she should do to start thinking about that. And then as we get closer to this event, because you never know when somebody's going to sign up, I have to, you always have to do it in our database this way. There's a campaign countdown to the event. So it's been set up as December 29th. And one day before the event, it, 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 she'll get an email saying, you know, it's coming, it's coming. And, and then it counts down um, to um, one day, four hours, one, two hours and 30 minutes, and then we're live. So it, it, it gets, and it's all set up to automate. So I don't have to do any of that because it's been set up. And it also, what's cool about this, the way I've set this up, is um, it un enrolls her from this campaign. Hmm. So it, the way that form was set up, it's set, and the way the campaigns are set up, it's like once this person signs up here, it automatically goes and unenrolls unenroll, them so she doesn't get these other emails. So just another important, you know, so you don't have to manually do that. So it's a, the, the, and the cool thing about this is, so this is all set up for, to run right now for me. And it, well, I leave on vacation on um, Sunday. This campaign of the email um, campaigns sets a launch on Monday. Um, before I go, 
all of this will be set up. Not set up yet, but it will be. And this stuff is all set up to run as soon as somebody fills out this little form. So it's really, really cool and a, a great way that, you know, I can run this whole campaign and come back from vacation 10 days later on the 27th. And on the 29th, all I have to do is, you know, um, have my work on, you know, do the final touch-ups touch on the presentation and deliver it. So it's, it's a beautiful thing to be able to do this um, from a freedom perspective, but more so from a conversion perspective. And so a couple things I want to show you here. Get out of this. So, Cami, while you're looking, all of the countdown stuff and, uh, you know, everything that's running while you're gone, uh, you set that up yourself, right? I set and, that up, yes. Okay. And yeah, do you, so have, I, do you I have to... Set, go ahead. Do you have to set that up every time you do a, a campaign, or can you reuse what you've got? If you were really... If you got... I do these so seldom. <laughs> I do them, you know, quarterly probably. Um, and if you wanted to do it on a really regular basis, so like if I look at um, this one, the countdown one that I just did, this one here. So this is in my, my database. So three days before the event, one day before the event, and two days before the event. This one is an event-based campaign in, in our system. So soon as so I, I've got an event on 12-29 and I've got one on um, January 3rd. I don't have to redo anything on this because I just, when the event goes, when it gets tagged as an event and I tell it to run this campaign, it's going right from that date. So it's three days, one day, two, two hours. Um, on a campaign, yeah. So I think you could you could totally set it up. I mean, you you have to get used to checking it and making sure that it's running right. Um, and I'm sure certain the people that do this in masses do it just like that. They set it up one time, they get the campaign built, and then they make sure they run that process on a very consistent basis. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay. So let me show you a couple of things. Um, so you can tell that so far I've had 14 visits to that site, and I've had seven people opt in to it. Woohoo! And so there's a 50% conversion rate. And with um, and when it's going out to our and what you what they actually recommend you do if you're doing this and and really deep kind of mastery of this is is that you create different lead pages for. Um, your social media and for your list because you're going to have much higher conversion rates in general to a list-driven lead page versus a social media-driven lead page. Um, so um, you can start to see, I mean, I'll just scroll down here and you can see some different things. So this was when Sarah and I were doing the Epic 2017 event earlier this week. We had 74 people open. We had 16 people um, opt-in. We had a 21% um, opt-in rate. You know, so you can see this, and you can, you can tell which leech pages then are really working for you and converting for you. Um, there was a couple more back here that, so this was when we did the Business on Fire um, two-hour webinar last April, and it was, and we actually did do a social media page test. We actually had 418 people click through to it, but we only had five people sign up. So it gives us something. What might we tweak within that lead page the next time we run this that, right. that increases this number, right? Right. And it also gives you data to know that, okay, if you are putting ad dollars behind your exactly. you know, Facebook posts, okay, well, the, the 
trigger that I pulled was good because there was conversion there. there I mean, there was you know 418 people that went over, and so right. you know that that's not the part that was broken. It was okay. That there was you know something that didn't resonate right. with that message piece that then you can you can tinker with, right? So yeah. I think it's the data that allows you to make better decisions. Yeah, totally gives you better decision capabilities. And then the cool thing about this is um, so you can go out here and I actually don't recommend drag and drop ones. I actually recommend the standard templates unless you want to get really good at doing lead pages. Um, but the standard ones are just much easier. You can say what's the highest converting ones. Um, so you can look through here. Um, you can say I am looking for, you know, all templates. I'm looking for thank you templates. So once they've signed up, that thank you, you know, you could go to, you know, what are the thank you ones that are there? Like the one that I showed you. Thank you for signing up. You can, um, if it's all about opting in, if it's um, if it's a launch, you know, you get all these different options that you want, you know, you can play with, and you could say video. I want the, the one that has a video in it, and to add a video in is really really simple. Um, Basically, you upload it to YouTube. You upload your video to YouTube. And if my internet speed was faster, it's probably going to be really slow because I'm on the on the inter I'm doing webinars on top of this. Um, basically, what you would get is um, you, you well you get this box, and you say video options. And basically, you drop in your um, embed code from YouTube, and you're done, and it's it's right into it. Um, so it's really, really simple ways to create sophisticated marketing. Um, this type of you know this this lead generation marketing, and use and utilize all the tools that have been um, proven to work for big name people that are doing this in masses. So it gives us a whole set of tools. And you can get even, you know, you can do split tests where it's really, you're really getting fancy and, you know, all these different things. Does this graphic work better than this graphic? Um, I frankly haven't done anything like that. Have you, Sarah? I haven't. Um, yeah. Not yet. Yeah. Yeah. And I think this was our, you know, this was a big thing last year that we decided we were going to, really start getting a little bit more sophisticated with what we were doing on our our online marketing and this was a great way to do it and there's like I said there's a couple of other um, um, types of companies or software you know online software like this besides lead pages that do this and I'm not thinking of their names right off the top of my head um, but this one has seemed to re work really well for us and you can get into creating lead boxes um, you know, if you're, I can't remember what this was. Yeah, there's so much oh. stuff that you can go deep, and 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 the, I guess the other part is is that this is also something that's pretty inexpensive. You know, for the amount of time that it can save, and that you know, just automation of system. And so, if you think that this is you know a space that you know your business can really benefit from, and you know, using these online marketing tools, then it's it's an opportunity for you to say, okay, how might this this serve me? And then you follow that down. So a lot, and I know it seems like a lot when you when you start looking at it, as Sarah said early on. But once you get into it, it's actually really cool, and it's kind of fun how you can make it all work and sing together. Um, and if you you know if you were going to go down this route, I would look to make sure that your um, your database and your webinar system integrates to the sales page software that you're you're doing. I mean, so we were looking at switching over to Zoom this year, and Lead Pages does not automate um, automatically link up to Zoom. So we decided not to move to Zoom because the the GoToWebinar link is just so easy, and it's just 
you know, it's instant. You just go down, you click on it, and there's your webinar, and you're you're connected in it, and it, you know, it, it signs them up for the webinar. So uh, they go on that page. Page. Cool. Well, I think oh, this I is the first time I'm ready. Hello? Hello? Uh -huh. <laughs> so we got Sandy on. Sandy on. Sandy on. Sandy on. So any questions? Nope, looks really straightforward. Okay. Well, so your big action item is to figure out, you know, are there systems, you know, that you need to bring into your business that will help you to save time, that will help you to really, you know, up-level your game? You know, this is just one example. And have fun with it. And share what you are using and what works well. You know, we know that this is something that is uh, fantastic. Yeah, let's keep sharing tools that work well. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks, yeah. ladies. This was great. <laughs> Thanks, Yes, guys. it was. And I don't know. Did, we don't have anything now until after Christmas, right? That's right. So, yeah, so yeah. wishing you all a very, very Merry Christmas. And um, we will be back together on the 28th. That's right, in Evergreen. Yeah. That's right. Cool. Hi, everybody. Ashara, please, please, please post tonight and tell us just yeah. how everything went. If you could give us, uh, um, you know, just a little post, that would be fantastic. Okay, I will do that. Well, Send a wonderful energy your way. It's going to be fabulous. Thank you so much. Yes. It, it'll be a blast. Yes, it will. Happy holidays, everyone. Same Bye. to you. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye.